Hi, I'm Matthew and we worked on Drone Playground for our third year group project. Uh, Drone Playground is a tool for teaching computing in primary schools because a lot of the core concepts of computing are quite abstract and intangible, so students find it hard to understand. Uh, so we made a tool that lets students control a drone with their code, and it can fly around right in front of them. And that lets students see exactly um, what their code's doing, where's it gone wrong, and how they can improve it. Hi, I'm Maria, and I will give you a brief overview of our project. We start off in the main menu of the app, uh, and then where the students have to choose an adventure, which has multiple tasks in it. Uh, after that, uh, the student chooses the task that is uh, to work on, and once clicking on it, they can see a wordy question that they need to understand, and which helps them with their critical thinking skills. Once they once they are comfortable with the task, they can start working on it by dragging the blocks from the left hand side onto the work area, and uh, building the program in order to uh, set uh, accomplish the task. Once they're happy with what they wrote, they can test it with our inbuilt simulator. And if, the, if everything works, they can request a flight from the teacher. Once this gets to the teacher's side, it can be reviewed. And if it's, everything is correct and safe, it gets approved for an actual drone flight. Hi, I'm Kitty. And I'm George. Uh, we both work on the front end for our project. For the front end, we use Vue.js to build our app. And Vue.js is a lightweight framework, and it is really reactive and is really easy to set up. All of the components are really reusable for our project. On top of Vue.js, we use Vuetify, which is a component framework. It gives give us a really nice uh, component, component library that you can reuse the components and also they all follow the same design so that we can make sure our interface is very user friendly and the design are really consistent. To make our app more friendly to the kids, we um, added this Blockly environment where students can very easily drag blocks from the left to the center of the screen and that will automatically create code for them. They, can, they will know how to use this because it's very, it is very similar to Scratch. Um, after they are happy with their code, they can go ahead and simulate the code um, in their inbuilt simulator. We use 3JS for this because it was very helpful for uh, us to import different models and uh, make the tasks more interactive for the kids. We did our real-time interaction with Socket.io so that when the students submit the code, the code will instantly appear on the teacher's side. And the teacher can choose whether to approve the code or to reject the code because the, the code might be a little bit well, wrong in some ways. And when the teacher gives the feedback back to the student, the feedback will instantly appear on the pop-up window. Hello, I'm Naranjan, and this is George, and we're here to tell you about the back end of our program. So as we were handed it, this project had uh, quite a few features that we quite liked, but the code ended up being quite difficult to work with. So in order to make the extensions to it that we wanted to, we, end up, we ended up needing to rewrite quite a lot of it. One of the main things that we rewrote was the uh, parser, which is the bit of code that takes the X-Drone code that's written and it turns it into the commands that are sent to the drones or to the simulator. So with, with the internal representation of, of the x program, we use the PyParrot library to actually control the drone. One main limitation we realized right off the bat was that the PyParrot library accepted commands in terms of seconds. So a drone command would look something like change pitch to 10 degrees for 10 seconds. But how do we relate this to a real world distance? To do this, we had to take real world measurements repeatedly to find out the average distance moved for different values of your pitch and drone. And with this, we were able to use these constants to relate to real world distances in, in the tasks. Now that you have a very high level understanding of the back end, you can understand that all the parts of the program which, dr which deal with controlling the drone are separated out into a different library internally, which means that our back end can potentially be used as a standalone Python library by itself. Looking forward with our project, we think it'd be really cool to make it more like a game, so add some uh, unlockables and achievements. Uh, unlockables could be stuff like making the drone do flips or swoop around, uh, they could be awarded at the end of each adventure 
and that would give the student something to continue working towards and engage them after the sort of novelty of flying a drone has worn off. Uh, another thing we could do is add the task grading into the simulator as well, meaning that if the drones weren't available, like they, they were all broken, uh, we could still sort of run the lessons and the students could still complete the tasks. Finally, we could add an option for more advanced students to edit the text directly, and that would give them a chance to experience what it's like to write in a real programming language. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed our project. For more cool videos from the Department of Computing, follow us on Twitter and YouTube.